วัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Thailand Today here on NBT World. Bright whale, Omuras whale, whale sharks, and leatherback turtles have been added to the list of reserved wild animals. The new Wild Animal Reservation and Protection Act was announced yesterday. Animal species, which includes bright whale, Omuras whales. Whale shark and leatherback turtle are now a registered reserved animal before they are just a protected animal. Marine biologist Dr. Thorn t h a m r o n g n a w a s a w a t said it took about four years to push these four species into becoming as reserved animals. They needed more protection, and now there are stricter laws to protect them. There have been no new reserved species in the last 27 years, said Dr. t o n The Natural Resources and Environment Minister, Warawut Selpa Acha, said an autopsy on a young female dugong, Mariam, confirmed that Mariam died of shock and a blood infection, and severe pieces of plastic were found. In her intestinal tract, Mr. v a r a w o o d said Mariam fell in after she encountered an aggressive dugong. Mariam didn't eat for several days and suffered a cardiac arrest, prompting veterinarians to give her a cardiac stimulant. On August 15, Mariam was taken to a nursing area on Libong Island in Drang Province. But did not recover. She was later pronounced dead. The autopsy has since shown that plastic had caused obstructions in Mariam's stomach, leading to inflammation, gastritis, and the blood infection. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment assigned the Department of Marine and Coastal Resources to preserve Mariam's body for study purposes. Mariam s e m e t she will also be used as a symbol for marine resource conservation in different projects. The director of the Veterinary Medical Aquatic Animal Research Center (VMARC) of j u l a l o n g k o n University, Associate Professor Dr. Nantarika s a n s u said today that eight pieces of plastic were found in Mariam's stomach. They were about 8 to 10 centimeters long. Mariam s likely consumed the plastic while she was eating seagrass. Thailand is ranked sixth in the world as the major contributor of ocean debris. There were 11.47 million tons of ocean debris, and 80 percent of it comes from land-based activities. According to the Department of Marine and Coastal Resources, Thailand is ranked the world's fifth biggest contributor of plastic waste, amounting to about two million tons of total waste. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment is planning to organize an international dugong conference in Trang Province in 2020. Following the death of baby dugong Mariam, the loss of orphan dugong Mariam is an important lesson for marine resources management in Thailand, especially on plastic waste reduction. The Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment is set to hold a global dugong conference in Trang, where a likeness of Mariam will be exhibited. To raise awareness of dugong community conservation, marking it the 18th dugong death over the past nine months. Staff from Hat n o p a r a t a r a m u g o p i p i National Park inspected the body of the beached dugong found on a u t o n s a i Harbor in a u n a n g k r a b i The beached dugong was found dead with a bruise on the left fin. The dugong's body, weighing 240 kilograms, has been sent to the Marine Biological Research Center in Phuket for autopsy. Terms of veterinarians.
from the Departments of Marine and Coastal Resources and the Department of National Parks, Wildlife and Plant Conservation, as well as volunteers to help transport the body of the ninth-month-old Dugong Mariam for final cleaning. Before placing the body into a plastic container to be transported to Bangkok by a Navy aircraft for taxidermy at the National Science Museum in Pratum Thani. Her lifelike mount will open, then be placed on display at Phuket Aquarium for the general public to learn more about rare marine animal conservation and the threats from plastic waste. The Mariam project is to be launched to promote large-scale conservation of the Dugong community and, the, uh, and other wildlife in Thailand. In keeping with the Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment Varawut Silpa Aisha's policy, a global meeting of Dugongs is planned to take place in Trang province in 2020 as well. Young baby Dugong Mariam that became an internet hit and a symbol of conservation in Thailand has recently died after eating plastic waste. Netizens all over the world mourned the death of beloved Mariam and postal console over marine life and ocean conservation. So next break we will talk about the government's efforts to implement a conservation and management plan of dugongs in Thailand. Coming back after a short break. NDT World, an English language television channel in Thailand. Authoritative sources for all government information. High standard content that's reliable and accurate across every platform. Our mission is to reflect the vision of Thailand. Keep up to date through our application or website by searching for NBT World. NBT World, a vision of Thailand. Welcome back to Thailand today here on NBT World. Today we'll meet with uh, Dr. Kong Kiet Kiti Watanawong. He's the director of the Phuket Marine Biological Center, PMBC, Department of Marine and Coastal Resources, and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. So he will tell us about the government's efforts to implement a conservation and management plan of Dugongs in Thailand. Sawadika. Sawadika. Welcome to Thailand Today program. Thank you very much. Well, what a sad moment, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about uh, Dugong Mariam. So you were in charge of this. You were at present when the when the crisis happening. I call it crisis because it's uh, happening. Uh, you mean uh, stranding of the uh, Mariam of yeah, the, uh, the well, Dugongs? Yeah. Actually, PMUC has been responsible to the stranded animal, uh, not only for Mariam, for other Dugongs uh, and for other marine uh, endangered species. Uh, so we have been working something like this for over mm. 20, more than 20 years. Yeah, but this case is like, I don't know, how come? T tell us about the moment because this has become talk of the town. People are remembering yeah. what's happening. Why do we remembering Mariam uh, more than any other Dugong? I see. It's always been very difficult decision to make for the stranded case. Mm. Uh, most of the case, uh, if we find out that they are able to to go back into the sea, so we try to getting them getting first aid and then having care mm. for a short term and try to re release back as soon as possible. Mm. But in the case of Mariam, mm. she was only five months old oh. to come at that time. Oh. So at that time, she will be, in general, the juvenile dugong have to stay with their mothers oh. until 1.5 years or, oh. yes. But what happened this time? So we well, still have to try the best case. Normally dugong will stay together between mother and calf oh. throughout about two years. But two uh, years. Uh, in the case of Mariam, we suspect that something should be happened to her mother. Oh. So that's why it's separate between mother and calf. Oh, and then so she came ashore. 
That's yes. why you found it. Uh, yeah, no. Tell me the moment when the when you first you found. Uh, okay. Actually, we we are not our staff are not the first person who encountered the dugong at the beginning. Okay. It was uh, rescued by local villagers okay. in Kabi uh -huh. province, and at that time, uh, she tried to release for two times before contacting us, oh. and then we tried to. We they also she they came back. She came back to oh. the same place to, oh. and and she also uh, wonder if uh, she, uh, Mariam can get hurt by fishing boats by boat strike oh. or by other human related activities. So okay. she has report to us. Uh -huh. That's why we came to the 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 area where oh. we, Mariam was first found. Oh. And at that time, we also considering of uh, releasing Mariam back mm -hmm. because with that uh, five months old, she still, we just uh, suspect that may, might be her mother still hanging around that area, nearby area. So uh -huh. she might find an opportunity to get close to her mother, her reunion with her mother again. Uh -huh. But it turned out that uh, Mariam That's kept coming back. Mm -hmm. So we have to make decision how to do with her. Mm -hmm. Normally, we will take care of uh, unweaned dugongs in captivity. Uh -huh. But in the case of Mariam, uh -huh. we are looking at a new way okay. of taking care instead. Natural because, way. Uh -huh. yes, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, normally if uh, we take care of that uh, very young state dugongs mm -hmm. in captivity, mm -hmm. they will not adapt to to environment, mm -hmm. to the sea, to the nature. I so see. it's caused more problem in the future. Mm -hmm. So we try to mm -hmm. rethinking about mm -hmm. having care of a uh, Mariam in natural habitats, mm -hmm. but is also action into having more manpower, more budget, mm -hmm. and more, more, more <laughs> and <laughs> more also other situation that distress. we have to cope with. Mm -hmm. So now, so the the reason of death of uh, Miss Maria is what? It is be, is because you be, first first they have nothing. She was okay. There's no suffered with the plastic or anything, right? And then because she was let out to eat, right? Yeah, she and was she set it? free, she totally set free. free. Yes. So every t uh, every morning she would come to us for uh -huh. asking for milk. Oh, sweet. And, That's and we right. fed so her whole day long until at night. So we try to leave her to get used to the area. For, for that, she went and take that. Yeah, at the beginning, she, she uh, tend to stay in very small area. Uh -huh. That quite safe. But uh, later on, when she gets stronger, she start to wandering around mm. in the wider area. Mm. And the cause of death for Mariam can be I define into two causes. Okay, First yeah. one from the uh, behavior of uh, social behavior of dugongs. Uh, dugong in that area where Mariam was taken care, it was the area not for mother and calf dugongs, but for the bull, for the male dugongs. <laughs> that the male dugongs uh, they have to defend their area to Ooh. to welcome for other female oh. dugongs. So. Mm. When yeah. Mariam start to get stronger and start to wandering the in the wider area, so it will be into the territory of the other male dugongs. That mm. is, so she was beat by other dugongs. Oh, <coughs> mm. But the second major threat to dugong that caused her to, de to die mm. is because of the plastic debris in mm. in the seagrass bed area. Mm. So since Mariam start to graze along the seagrass area, mm. so that plastic uh, pieces uh, were buried for a long time oh. underneath the seagrass bed area. So um, when she started to, to graze for seagrass, she also obtained that plastic Just objects. cannot distinguish and between the two. Right? That's true. That's and why now we come to know that uh, this is the reason why people have so much interest. Because the story behind it, because she kept coming back and, and she you know, with healthy actually, and went back, uh, you know, away from us by death. You know that yeah. that is the cause. Well, so what is the cu current uh, situation of <coughs> this uh, dugong and the seagrass in Thailand now? I think Thailand. We have to be proud of the. It's estimated to be the biggest 
uh, population of dugongs in Southeast Asia. So. Yes. Is, is there a reason behind it? Yeah, because we have uh, dugongs rely on sea gas, and we quite have, we have lot. in in general we have about 250 square kilometers of sea gas on over Thailand. So oh that's right. why we can find dugongs on mm. over Thailand, mm. in both in the Gulf of Thailand and in the Man Sea. In the Gulf of Thailand, we can find in three population, three po subpopulations from the eastern coast of Thailand, mm. in the middle coast, and mm. in the southern part. Mm. And along the Andaman Sea, mm. we can find dugongs in mm. on of the seagrass area mm. from Ranong Province down mm. to Satun Province. And the biggest population of dugongs in Thailand, about 70% were found in Trang Province. Mm. That's why we also make this decision to uh, Mariam, that she was first stranded in Kabi, and we transferred her to that area, to Ribong Island. To Ribong Island. That uh -huh. is like a hometown or uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> city, city of Dugong. Oh, we like we are talking to human beings, you know. Yeah, well, this is the mentality of Thai people, wherever you are, but uh, this kind of thing is uh, vulnerable. It's kind of thing is such a rant and such a... Well, when we preservation of uh, sea animal so important for Thai people also. And we feel the same thing in the whole country. We were saddened by this situation. Yep. That's, so sad. That's well, so the International Union of uh, Conservation of Nature uh, classified dugong uh, as uh, vulnerable. Yes. So what is primary threat of this rare marine animal, apart from what you said? Yeah, in general, most of the dugong in t in the world yes, were threatened by by fishing gears fishing gears yes ah. so in thailand from our record of stranded record more than 400 record of stranded dugongs we found that they the major cost uh, about 89 percent of the stranded costs were by fishing activities mm. and among those fishing Netting, net also yes strangling about net. about 55 percent entangled to the gill net Net, yeah. yeah, especially the coastal area gill net, oh. a bottom long line, oh. trap net. What should we do? Because we protecting the by, by the net, right? The shore by the net for, for people not to cross over, but then yeah. it return. That is very challenging oh. things for conservation of dugongs. Mm. How to manage mm. having mm. dugong to survive mm. and having people along the dugong living area to be survived as well. Mm. So any any plan or anything to do because such a because it's extremely vulnerable. So by extinction of it, it's so sad and so so lost. So what what is a project? What is a uh, way that to do it? Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, let me explain uh, the situation furthermore about yes, the sir. dugong in Thailand. Uh, uh -huh. Even though we have, uh, now we identify about 12 subpopulations of dugong or managing site yes. for dugong in Thailand. Yes. We found like in the case of uh, the Gulf of Patani, mm. where they have a lot of seagrass there. Oh. We used to see dugongs over there, but now it's already extinct, locally extinct in that area for more than 15 years. Mm. So uh, this kind of, les of the lessons that we try to, we have to, to use this lesson in both good and bad, like good thing about the uh, Maria model in Libong Island mm. and the lesson learned that we know the extinction of the dugong in Patani Bay. Mm. So that combining this, we will try to use uh, the Maria model to protect the du other dugongs mm. in, in Thailand. Mm. The models comprise of the mm. Uh, the strategy to combine between wellness of the local people and the survival of the dugong mm -hmm. and habitats. Mm -hmm. So we know we get very good uh, lesson learned from mm -hmm. Libong area where mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. six years ago we found only 125 dugongs in that area mm -hmm. but with cooperation working together with between government and and local people, mm. we can raise the number of the dugong mm. up to 185 year, mm. uh, 185 individuals in this year in mm. 2019. Mm -hmm. So mm. with that Maria model, we try to to use the same thing to imply into other the rest uh, eleven 
target areas for Dukong. Director, how do we able to destroy the plastics underground <sighs> if it happen again? You know? Yeah, that's why we have. Uh, not underground, under the, uh, under the sea. You know actually. that uh, actually uh, more than eighty percent of the sea garbage mm. are from land based. That's why are from our, our blowing. I think yeah, it's blowing being washed up washed. into the mm. maybe uh, not managed, not treat, not treat in the direct uh, in the good way. So finally, it's turned out into the sea and wash up to the shore and mm. to the human again and to. not only to the human but mm. to other marine creatures mm. and environment mm. well uh, how does uh, seagrass beds play an important role in sustaining the abundance of marine endangered species particularly dugongs, dugongs. yeah you know uh, Dukong rely very much on seagrass. They eat seagrass. They eat seagrass. Ninety-eight percent of the food contents in their stomach are seagrass. Nothing else. No, uh, nothing else. Uh -huh. So, and because of this seagrass, uh, they have to stay in very near to the shore area, where seagrass can grow. Oh, really? Normally, within about six kilometers, where the distribution of dugong occur. Uh -huh. So this makes dugongs prone, very prone to uh, human activities. Mm -hmm. So most of, as I explained to you that, that most of the threats are from uh, anthropogenic threats. Mm -hmm. How about, we, we, this is a stupid question, but uh, how can we grow the <laughs> seagrass in the sea itself? Yeah, how actually, uh, from our record, we found that uh, over the past uh, five to 10 years ago, mm -hmm. the uh, coverage density of seagrass decline about 20 percent mm. and that make one uh, make uh, you, you know that uh, it's make dukong uh, is a kind of uh, important pain important role in the survival of dukong so mm. also that effect to the populations of dukong as well but uh, Many agencies in Thailand, I believe that they, they try to, mm. to grow up, to rehabilitate mm. seagrass. Sea but yes. from uh, my opinion, the best way to protect seagrass, uh, the best way to, to uh, conserve seagrass is to protect the area. Mm. So after we, if uh, uh, seagrass be, has been protected, uh, they will start to grow by themselves. So and mm. and somebody also asked me mm. if Dukong rely on seagrass, they feed on seagrass. Mm. Will number of seagrass reduce by Dukongs? Uh -huh. So, but uh, from our study, after we increased over the uh, Dukong feed over the they leave the feeding trails okay. and that. The, those of seagrass that being eaten will mm. start to recover back within mm. only one or two two months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to come back about your meal later. Oh uh, yes. But what is the key role of a Phuket Marine Biological Center of your center, PMBC, in the seagrass resource management and dugong, and dugong. reservation? Yes. Uh, PMBC Phuket Marine Biological Center. We are research center. Mm -hmm. So what we did, what mm -hmm. we have done. Mm -hmm over the past 20 years is mm. to find out the facts about mm. dugong, mm -hmm. find out the facts how to recover seagrass bed. Mm. So with this scientific, scientific based information, we yeah. use, the government use this information mm. for, managing, for management, okay. for conservation mm. of both dugong and habitats. Mm. Mm. So, uh, well, um, uh, when we talk about something to eat, <laughs> they eat plastic, but there's something in the grass, but they don't eat plastic, yamil. but they did I mean, not distinguish. They didn't distinguish the, yeah. But the yamil, yeah, he too overeating the seagrass, uh, right? What he happened also to him? eat seagrass. Another uh, sad moment. That to is eat. quite a sad mm -hmm. things about yamil because we think that it's already totally protected in captivity, but actually, uh, to raise this kind of animal in in, cap in captivity, captivity is quite limited. Mm. Uh, they can cause something. Uh, uh, not normally, even though dugong eat seagrass, but they require a certain kind of bacteria 
to digest sea grass. So when the when Yamil start to eat more and more sea grass, uh, we we also realize that it make some bloating condition in the stomach because of lacking of the digestive digestive bacteria to help to to help uh, Yamil to to digest the sea grass. So he came ashore. For the case of Yamil, we found that uh, Yamil uh, came to the shore stranded, mm. but the cause of uh, stranded we can't mm. identify because of beaten by mm. other bull, mm. other male dugongs. Mm. Okay. All right. So we are coming to the end of the first part of our interview. So next we will discuss further about the importance of conservation work and other environmental efforts to save remaining dugongs in Thai waters from extinction. Prestige. Show Thai to the world, a concept of Siam style program to introduce you to well-known Thai role models. Ultimate amazing tourist attractions. Innovative Thai products. Let's proudly join Siam styles from four regions, 77 provinces across Thailand. Once again to our program, we are still with Dr. Kong Kiet Kiti Watana Wung. He will tell us about measures to conserve dugongs in Thailand. So, Doctor, we were discussing about these uh, sad things that are happening in, in Thailand. So, um, what kind of a measure of a PMPC has implemented to protect and conserve these endangered uh, dugongs in Thailand? Yes. Uh we Thailand together with other countries, more than 40, 45 countries in the world where they have uh, big, that where they have dugongs. Mm. <coughs> we try to develop the, the strategies. Mm. So we come up with four strategies to mm. help conservation of dugongs. Mm. First of all, we try to do something to get rid of direct threat to mm. dugongs. Mm. So we know that the fishery, fishing gears, fisheries can be the major threat mm. to dugongs. So we have to manage about regulation of the this kind of threat. Mm -hmm. Second thing, uh, we know that dugong cannot live without sea grass. So we have to protect their home, their house. Mm. Grow more. By grow more sea grass, protecting the sea grass in the area. And also we try to do conservation uh, protected area for dugongs, mm -hmm. marine protected for area for dugong. And sea grass. How about educating people to that the it whole is south of Thailand? Yes, actually that was the third strategy that I'm going to mention. Awareness and education mm. is very important issues mm. uh, to get people aware of how important of dugong, how important mm. of sea grass. That mm. not only to be the house of dugongs, but can be the house for other marine creatures mm. like sea turtle, green turtles mm. also mm. eat sea grass. Mm -hmm. As well as oh, uh, the, the same, same, same as same dugong, like yes, uh -huh. they are also vegetarians and dugong, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, yeah, so it's very important to get people. You know that it's very important to get local people to know to how to protect dugong, how to mm. to know important of having dugong and sea grass, not mm. only to to protect other marine creatures, but also to protect the economic. Mm. If they can. Uh, enrich the environment. They mm. it's mean that they can have a chance, more chance to get mm. more, mm. more food products mm. from mm. the sea and mm. generate the uh, benefit of social and economic. Mm. And the the last component uh, will be we have to do anything based on scientific information so we can get the right choice for manage management and conservation. Mm -hmm. The gong is not for eating. Can pe people consume the flesh? Yeah, actually, like in the case of Aus, uh, Australia, mm -hmm. they eat? where they have indigenous tribes oh. who still hunt dugongs. But Goodness. since in that 
more than 90 percent of dugong around the world occur in in in, in Australia and it's not mm. uh, the status over there is very still very good. Don't, in, don't, so good yeah. even if they are eaten. But they very eat. so like hundred thousand of dugong staying were found in Australia. Mm. So with that very maybe less than 0.5 percent mm, being being eaten okay. by by uh, indigenous people, uh, so uh, uh, that also sustain the populations of dukong, but not the case for Thailand, uh, where we have only two hundred and fifty dukongs uh, all over Thailand, and yeah. some of the population subpopulation in Thailand was al already gone, like yeah. I mentioned about Batani uh, uh, Bay. Normally, it's a huge uh, mammal. You know, it's yeah. a kind of very huge. So, uh, uh, to, to make that you to to how how can they survive? Yeah, it's like tons. Uh, you could see that. Yeah, yeah. Compared to other marine mammals, uh, we consider dugong as the middle-sized marine mammals. The the longest dugong can be reach about uh, three meters. Oh, huh? The newborn dugong will be around one meter long. Oh, pinkish, you know, so cute. Yes, so they cute. are so cute. Uh, and I could see because um, from the TV at that, that, that period of time that they, they were trying to s survive, but let them see he survives. So uh, what? If somebody hold it like the mother to them. So you think the mother to, to Maria actually, not to them because my Jamil, we hardly see about it. But what's that? What, yeah, if what? you see in television, uh, mm. you will see Mariam always stay together with Orange Kayak mm, because in Thai, Masom, mm. uh -huh. Mother Kayak, uh -huh. Mother Orange Kayak. Uh -huh. So she, we use that as a representative for the, her mother uh -huh. because when Mariam was so. found stranded, she was came into underneath the boat, uh -huh. the long tail boat. So uh, because of the shape of the, uh, it's like the half of the dugong's the mother, uh -huh. and about the same size. So that's why she gets <coughs> to find something to, like 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 us also, uh, uh, dugong as marine mammals, uh, mammals. So the bonds between mother and calf are very, very strong. So a she why she has to find something to be able to protect place, her, oh. to, to raise her mother. So the shape of the boat, underneath the boat, will represent uh, the shape of her mother. Mm. And when she learned that underneath of the orange kayak, it's very safe for her, so she, she trusts on that, so she relies on that. And we use that orange mother as the tool mm. to call Mariam to mm. do exercise, to oh do yeah. other activities. Look at that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, as Mariam Dugong, uh, Dugong Mariam has become the na the nation's sweetheart and uh, internet uh, sensation. So, how she helped raise public awareness about conservation and the plight of Dugong? I think uh, we consider Dugong as the protected species since the 1996. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, I think. The case of Mariam raised ten or hundred times awareness of the people since only within this uh, uh, few months, and that uh, I think the case of Mariam and Jamil very much helped not uh, only other dukongs in Thailand but other dukongs in the world as well. Do you think that's a strong punishment or a strong uh, law implementation should be brought to use Actually, for the people who throw plastic or something? To throw plastic. <laughs> we, <laughs> use every, we use plastic <laughs> every day. That's why we have to reduce amount of plastic. Mm. Actually, dugong is protected species. It's or punishment already uh, written by laws mm. that no nobody should harm or possess any oh, part preserved. of dugong. It's a preserved they are protected, animal. yeah, protected preserved animals, animal, right. Oh, okay. But uh, we cannot protect only dukongs. We have to protect their house. And if we uh, make their house dirty mm. by dumping mm. the waste thing from human, mm. so I think it should be our responsible yeah. to take care of the house of dukong, yeah. to clean up, yeah. to not to dump anything into their house. Mm. It doesn't mean that we put the blame to the so the local people for what's happening to both of uh, 
of the ad uh, for, for to Maria, but uh, but it's a sharing, not only to solve, but responsibility. That right. uh, we That's all really share the same uh, fault or whatever yeah. uh, yes. will happen to, 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 to the uh, animal. Well, so what will future challenges uh, uh, for this seagrass management and dugong conservation? I think dugong live very near to the shore area, mm -hmm. and local people have to rely on the mm -hmm. shore area activities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the balancing between conservation of dugong and utilizing of the sea area mm -hmm. with the local people is very really challenging. Things mm -hmm. how to harmonize mm -hmm. in a good way to keep to make safe for dugong and make people in that area to survive uh, to to be able to earn a living on in mm. that area mm. so this is very but we have a good examples of the model beacon maria models that mm. occur in libong area uh. as i mentioned that the, this area is like the city of dukong in thailand uh. and over the past six years we find the increasing number of dukong in the area mm. so we try to mimic to try to use the same model working between government and local villagers mm. to help yeah. support uh, saving dukong in the area and increase the number mm. throughout the activity conservation activities actually dukong is as you said they they, they eat uh, close to the, the the coastal area but actually it is a deep sea animal no they are, are really they shallow you will surprise you will be surprised oh. uh, with these sea creatures that they live only in within one to five meters area where they have sea grass and during the low tide they will be waiting outside the, the deeper area but not so deep so normally they will stay only within six kilometers from the shore area from mm. the sea grass area mm. some of the male dugongs will wandering in longer distance the but stronger because the strong the one they, so they go to find other area ah. for living ah. So that is kind of, and you were surprised also that each dugong have different, uh, they have like a kind of, uh, like us, we have different emotions, we have different characters. Dugong also. How do you know? Because from taking uh, study, like in the case of Australia, okay. five, each dugong, they take more than 70 dugong, and each dugong behave differently they're wandering they stay in different area they we have differently like in the case of mariam and yamu also they mm. are both the male and female mm. uh, dukong calf mm. they behave differently mm. uh, mariam like like a girl she <laughs> more <laughs> she more Cute girl. like uh. girl you can imagine uh. but for the yamu he was like more macho more he just uh, come to us when he need milk and then she just go away when he doesn't born and mm. stay uh, by himself so it's mm. differently between uh, each dukong individual mm. between sex also but it is so difficult situation because uh, well you you having enough availability of uh, seagrass again you eat too much i know how could how do we do what way that to avoid all this? Because you have done your best. I mean, human being have done best, but this is a natural occurrence, natural death. Yes, mm. like in the case of uh, Mar Mar Maria, Maria uh. so we know the cause of death. Cause of uh, death, yes. Oh. So, so. But Jamil is another for Jamil, over overeating, right? I think it will be a lesson learned um, uh, because for you said us that that we're going to improve. We know that uh, with that, we will try to use other. Actually, we have to get bacteria from How do you? How from do you? other dugong feces. Really? Yeah, because normally when dugong eat, uh, stay together with mother, they will get some bacteria transfer from mother to Did the calf so? to help ah. digesting the seagrass. Uh -huh. And also with the wider area in captivity, we have to take care in the bigger captivity, mm -hmm. bigger tanks. So they have dugong ha can have more movement mm -hmm. and help. Uh, have getting a better digesting system work. Mm -hmm. So, what are the main points of the National Dugong's masterpiece from a special meeting of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment following the death of Mariam? Yeah, so 
with the the death of both Mariam and Jamil bring us a sadness mm. of all. But uh, we're not going to stop. We know that Mariam and Jamil, they are not going to be the last case of stranding mm. for Dukong. So mm. with the experience we obtained from Mariam and Jamil, we'll help mm. for surviving of other stranded Dukong, especially mm. the uh, Chuidai Dukongs. Mm. And with the lesson learned, with the awareness, by the public, huge awareness mm. raised by uh, the public because of Mariam and Yamil, mm. it will help conservation of other dugongs and their habitats. Mm. At that time, when the announcement or after, I think you were there, right side by side with uh, Mariam. It was uh, very sad and, uh, well, Tell us about the, the, the feeling of that uh, uh, part of it, of the officers. In Besides of being sad, uh, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. tears or something. Yeah, of course. Uh, I still have that memory in my mind. Uh, Ever, every stop in that mm, place, mm. start crying. crying. Oh. Yeah, it's it's coming by mm. by co mm. by by itself. Mm. I think it's because. Uh, even though it's not that short, uh, even it's quite a short time, only two mm. months or only four months together with both Dukongs, mm. but the bonds between us and them... Mm. Attachment. Very much. Mm. And you, if now you only seen from te television, television, but if you have be able to touch, to get mm. the feeling mm. from the Dukongs, from mm. the calf, mm. you know, that is not, it's like mother and, mother and child. That mm. how it's, it's very much touching each other. Mm. It is a surprise to see that because sea animal, or we could see the, the, the home animal, what you call pets at home, you know, the cat and all that, because attachment that much, but that's on the sea. And it could feel the, yeah. the warmth yeah. of the people who look after her. I think it's very mm. much similar to humans. They are more mammals. They are mammals. They are mammals. They eat and their when breath you, When you feed her, feed Mariam, or feed him, feed Jamil, he will eat and sleep in our arms, in our chest. Sleeping? Yes. How? Close the eyes? Close their eyes and take rest. Oh. Yeah, like it's spread the same as human baby. Mm. But actually, they can, uh, if in the sea, they have no opportunity to close the, uh, their eyes. They do when they but feed how did on. Dukong, uh, uh, because uh, Dukong is like uh, elephants, they have the breath, their breath, they, uh, they breath drink feeding. milk. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. breath feeding. So, it's the same manner that uh, they get warmth from her mother by that way. Oh. So, similar to. Well, it's so sad because, uh, well, it's a similarity is there, and also the way attachment is there, and uh, efforts that the people from the local people and officers like uh, like uh, Doctor Kongkiet also has responsible. That's why we could see that uh, it was a sorrow for the country also at that time. I have a minute for you, sir. Yes. Why didn't you tell to the audience, in convince them, trying to tell them that what's happening, and then uh, try we need the cooperation. Okay. Yes. yes, I think uh, when I get my career in PMBC mm. 25 years ago, uh, uh, I, I am very happy to be able to work with these marine creatures, marine endangered species, mm. especially dugong. So I've been in contact with these mm. animals, yes, like Mariam, the case of Mariam and Jamil for many times. And uh, it would be uh, but later on, uh, we f I found that um, it would be difficult to work only between researcher and, and dugong to conserve them. We have to work with th the threat, and we know the threat mm -hmm. of dugong are from humans. So, mm -hmm. uh, but so it, as I mentioned, that it's very challenge to balancing between utilization of the area and uh, like to balance conflict of interest between local people and dugong. Mm -hmm. So this is very uh, important to have 
the right management, mm -hmm. like in the case of uh, Libong area where mm -hmm. already success and show can be the showcase for other mm -hmm. 12 uh, Dukongs, mm -hmm. important area in Thailand to be uh, to to make the conservation plan. Mm -hmm. Well, so I wish you all the best, sir, and uh, you all have our hearts and support. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're ending up our program with thanks to Dr. Kong Kiet Kiti Watana Wong. Uh, we are really appreciate for your coming here all the way from Phuket. And, yes. Uh, well, tell us more if you have anything. We'll rush there to see you there. Yeah, thank Kong you very much. Kong 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 Kong. We're ending up our program and uh, looking forward to see you again and hope you enjoy the show. สวัสดีค่ะ